My name is Nicole Moiseev, and I'm a summer fellow in the BD2K Lynx DCIC Research Training Program in the Myon Lab. And today I'll be presenting on my project, a web application for the visualization and characterization of cancer patient clusters using RNA sequencing profiles. As an overview, I'll first give a brief background on RNA sequencing and the source of my data, as well as what an APITER is. I'll then outline the analysis pipeline and demonstrate how parameters are set through the APITER input form. Next, I'll walk through example portions of the APITER output for a cohort of patients diagnosed with papillary adenocarcinoma. And finally, I'll highlight the key use cases of this web application and conclude with my plans for extending it. As a brief background, RNA sequencing is a method to quantify transcriptomes by counting individual RNA transcripts present in a sample. Transcripts are typically mapped to their associated genes, for instance, by aligning to a reference genome to get overall gene expression. The Cancer Genome Atlas is a large database of analytes and clinical metadata for thousands of cancer patients. Given the rise in RNA sequencing, TCGA includes a large corpus of RNA-seq data in a variety of formats that are publicly available for researchers to analyze. This project is implemented as an APITER, which is a platform developed by the lab to turn Jupyter Notebooks into, into standalone web applications. A key aspect of APITERs is the input form, an interface where the user can set certain parameters or upload data to be used in the APITER. I'll show an example of what this looks like in a couple slides. Then the APITER executes the notebook with the set variables and the result closely resembles a journal publication. And the compartmentalized code blocks are followed by their outputs and markdown cells, uh, which are used to provide user-friendly descriptions. The notebook itself, with all its code, can also be downloaded after execution. All APITERs created by lab members can be accessed from the APITER catalog uh, at the link shown here. The analysis pipeline provided by my APITER is as follows. I've pre-processed the clinical data and RNA-seq files into tables for each cancer type with at least 150 associated patients with RNA-seq data available from TCGA and stored those files on the cloud. The user can select one of the 14 cancer types available for such data or upload their own files in the format that I will discuss. Next, I process the data in a standard RNA sequencing pipeline consisting of filtering, normalization, and clustering. I then use the clusters and associated survival data for survival analysis. I also identified differentially expressed genes for each cluster, which I use for enrichment analysis as well as comparison to perturbed gene expression profiles in the L1000 dataset. Here's what the input form looks like for my APITER. The APITER creator is able to divide the input field into various sections, and if you click on any section header, you'll expand that section to be able to set the related fields. Here you can see the section for data set selection, where the user can either upload their own RNA-seq and clinical data files, or select a TCGA cancer type with the dropdown to load that cohort. I'll now be running through some highlights of the APITER output if you were to select papillary adenocarcinoma from the dropdown, and leave all other parameters as their default values. The format of the data can be seen here and is assumed to be the same regardless of whether the data set comes from TCGA or is user uploaded. For the RNA-seq data table, the column indices are patient IDs and the row indices are NTRES gene symbols. For the clinical data, the column indices are various clinical features. The row indices are patient IDs corresponding to those in the RNA-seq data table. The first step in processing the RNA-seq data is filtering for the topmost variable genes, then taking the log transform, normalizing, and converting to z-scores. On the left, you can see the distribution of normalized expression for the topmost variable and the leastmost variable gene in the resulting data set, respectively. And on the right, you can see the expression distribution of a single individual for all the filtered genes. Next, the dimensionality of the data set is reduced through principal component analysis, or PCA. I also generate an interactive scatter plot of the data projected onto the top two principal directions. The color coding of each data point can be set to any of the clinical features, such as ICD-10 code descriptions, as shown here, or age of the, feature of the patients, as shown here. Both numerical and categorical features are supported. At this point, you might be able to already observe some clustering in the data. Next, dimensionality is further reduced by using the top X PCA components, which is the user set parameter, for unifold manifold approximation and projection, or UMAP, which is useful to accentuate any clustering present. Here is a similar scatterplot as before, using the 
two uh, UBAP components. Those two UMAP components are used to compute clusters using the k-means algorithm. Since k-means requires that we define k, the number of clusters, which we don't know upon loading the data set, we try a range of values of k and analyze the quality of clusters for each value. The method used to ultimately select the ideal k is chosen by the user and may be one of silhouette score, a modified large k prioritizing silhouette score to reward large numbers of clusters, or a quote-unquote second derivative method that identifies the sharp sharpest local maximum of the score. As seen here, the ideal k based on the latter two methods is 4, while the basic silhouette score would have selected k equals 3. Next, I fit a linear classifier on each feature to score how well it is able to predict a patient's cluster membership. On the left, you can see two ROC curves for while predicting clinical features. ICD-10 code description, for instance, perfectly distinguishes whether a patient belongs to cluster 1 or not, while age on the right performs well but slightly worse. I next use the clusters and relevant clinical information to generate Kaplan-Meier survival curves for each cluster and output statistics indicating how different those curves are using both a multivariate and pairwise log rank test. Here we can see clusters 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 have quite significantly different survival curves. I next find the most differentially expressed genes, or DEGs, for each cluster by calculating the characteristic direction for each gene for each cluster and comparing it to the rest of the data set to get the up and down regulated gene sets for each cluster. I then generate a hierarchically clustered heat map of the DEG expression profiles, where the color coding along the top indicates cluster membership of each patient. Here we can see the existence of four clusters very clearly reflected in the heat map. I use the up and down gene sets for each cluster to query Enricher, a web-based tool developed by the lab for enrichment analysis using a variety of libraries. This generates a table of significant terms and their associated p-values for each set, which I convert into bar plots like the one shown here to visualize the most relevant terms per set per library. I also display the UMAP component scatter plot again this time color coding uh, points by clusters for reference against the enrichment plots. Lastly, I also use the gene sets to come up with the most similar and opposite gene expression signatures in the L1000 dataset for each cluster and present these in a downloadable table. I also present information on the drugs used to produce the most opposite signatures. An interpretation of these is potential treatments that may reverse the abnormal gene expression characteristic to each cluster. To conclude, I believe this Aperture offers a simple, transparent pipeline to quickly generate analysis results on any new dataset. The only job the researcher using the tool has is to ensure their data is in the correct initial format. More specifically, this Aperture uh, allows non-computationally trained biologists and clinicians to tune their analysis pipeline parameters without having to interact directly with any code. I also see this tool having educational value by offering an interpretable representation of uh, TCGA cohorts that can be uh, it looked at by anyone interested in getting more exposure to such data or learning about a typical RNA-seq workflow. In the future, I'd like to extend this tool so that it can be used in a clinical setting by allowing doctors to project a single patient's RNA-seq profile onto the pre-existing space of a cohort with the same diagnosis, and this could allow for meaningful insight derived from the patient's cluster membership. Lastly, I'd like to thank everyone at the lab, especially Daniel Clark, Errol, Avi, and Sherry for their continued support and insight throughout the development of the project. I couldn't imagine a better team to work with. I also want to thank all the other summer scholars and members of the lab for keeping me motivated with their incredible work updates. It has truly been an honor to be a part of this group. Thank you.